Hey, what up? Corey Taylor here from Slipknot, and welcome to Doctor Who Extra! Hello guys, and welcome to another vlog. Now, uh, if you like this kind of video, then do let me know. Uh, it's quite important, and I know whether to make them or not. Although I do enjoy doing the vlogs quite a lot. Um, I remember on my old channel, I did quite a lot of vlogs. It was called Seventh Through Vlogs, so that maybe that shows why I like doing the vlogs. Uh, but anyway, today I am working on creating the sets for the new action figure animation. Uh, I've ordered some foam for the brick walls. But yeah, essentially the sets are kind of going to be completely scratch made and not just printed out from the action figure theatre site because, like I said before, they were good for the time. But I mean, when you have a HD camera, uh, you can see all the uh, the print lines and stuff and that, that's no good when it comes to filmmaking. You want it to feel as real and as visceral as possible. So anyway, I'll show you what I'm doing so far. So I'm using the action figure theatre uh, um, print out as a template, but I am cutting out the window frames and I'm going to be spraying this white just to so it's actually the the frame color and then I'm going to be getting some transparent foggy plastic and uh, some brick texture for uh, the blue part. So yeah guys I'm kind of just sat here thinking do you guys want to see more action figure reviews because they do seem to get a lot of attraction on uh, this channel. I was want, I've always wanted to have like a review set up just so it's really easy for me to actually film reviews because that's one of the things which puts me off because I always end up having to move things out of the way and stuff and I don't have a permanent setup. I would I would love to but I just don't have the room. It's really annoying because I've got to stop moaning and just do it, haven't I? Uh, i kind of got to rearrange my room a little bit again just so I can get a review station up. Do you want a plain white background like uh, in both Saxons? reviews and all the other YouTubers because I feel like that's probably the best kind of thing to go for because you can just see the item in frame and no other distractions. I would actually, I would really like to review new products and stuff but the problem is I'm not made of money. Uh, I kind of would like to every piece of merchandise that comes out do a review of it because that would be really fun but like I said I would run out of money very quickly so if anybody would be interested in sending stuff to me that would be awesome that I could review it. And I'm planning on making new reviews as attention grabbing as possible because let's face it, that's all YouTube is. I was thinking for the month of June to do daily uploads, but obviously I'd have to make my workflow very efficient. So if I, if I were to review things every day or stuff like that and do discussion videos, I'd have to get a setup which was uh, reusable throughout the day so I don't have to set it up and take it back down again. Uh, let me know what you think of that idea, guys. I'm, I'm kind of quite interested in doing it and maybe some vlogs here and there and things just just to get stuff on this channel just to get it just to get it moving and stuff which I need to optimize is obviously series 13 discussion videos and things because they're the ones that are gonna get uh, clicks let's face it um, but yeah uh, let's let's take on this challenge guys and just just do something because I'm I'm bored into the bread basket of doom <laughs> okay so I've settled on a temporary setup and I think it's it's pretty decent um so turn the camera on obviously you can see all the the shadows and stuff so we'll go ahead and switch on this 80 pound this is what I use by the way light so there you go that's kind of flooded it but it's still has the issue of a shadow. Then we turn on this wonderful blast, just so it gets rid of the shadow which was there. And then we turn this one up to full blast. And then when you look at it like this, it looks kind of really quite cool and kind of professional kind of. And then when you see it on the viewfinder, the uh, the shadows are gone and it really just makes the colors pop and it just makes them very vibrant. So I'm very pleased with how this looks. Obviously, I'm gonna obviously hone it in and stuff and improve it as every review goes on. But this is quite a good setup for now, just to actually get me making reviews again. Oh yeah, and these two are twenty-five pounds each. Uh, they're adjustable, so you can adjust the brightness and the temperature. So this is like a bluey color, just to get rid of all the oranges. So right now, I'm going to be doing a dummy review, and I think that's probably going to be the title of this video. I'm not sure whether it's going to go on the main channel or whether it's going to go on the Mono Supreme Extra channel. I was trying to open my door, um, but essentially I'm just going to be reviewing something at random uh, just to see uh, how I can do this new format and see whether it works and edit it to uh, be as professional as possible. So, uh, so yeah, as you can see, I've set it up here and uh, it's just a dummy review, so I've got a very old tattered one, which is like the first one I grabbed. So if I ever decide to do a proper review, then I'll get as good condition 10th Doctor as I can. 
and I've just put the figures together in one shot for ready for the thumbnail. Uh, meow? Hello YouTubers and random people of the internet, it is me, Ozzy, one part of the Mother Supreme YouTube channel, and today we're going to be taking a step back in time and looking at the 10th Doctor in trench coat figure from way back in 2006. So without further ado, let's take a look at the packaging. Overall, you can see it's done in that gorgeous orange and blue motif, which they used on all of the Rusty Davis era merchandise. I do really miss this. I think it pops out very well. I don't think it's just a nostalgia thing. I think it genuinely complements the toy line very well. Uh, and yeah, they did try and recreate this with the Capaldi 3.75 inch figures, but I don't know, it just didn't capture this early 2000s magic. So, on the top left hand corner of the packaging we have Poseball Action Figure Set, which is kind of confusing because it's not a set, maybe it just means the range, but uh, I don't know, they were still getting used to the action figure thing at this point, so I can't really blame them. We have the BBC logo and 5 Plus. As you can see, the Doctor is placed in a TARDIS shaped window box where the background is a dematerialising TARDIS. It also shows off the Sonic Screwdriver accessory and the figure in a blister style packaging. The ident card includes a nice promotional image of the 10th Doctor holding the Sonic Screwdriver, includes Sonic Screwdriver accessory, the Doctor in big letters and the Doctor Who 2005 logo. On the bottom left we have the Character Options website and on the bottom right we have the Character Options logo. So, turning it back around, we can see the nice images of all the other action figures. Uh, do you remember these days when we'd actually get figure waves? So we've got the 10th Doctor in trench coat, Doctor in suit, Mini RCK9 and Doctor, Werewolf, Cyberman, Krillotane, Rose Tyler and K9, and Mini RC Dalek. With the nice CGI render instead of the action figure. Posable action figure set in the top right, a TARDIS at the bottom right, and all that beautiful legal stuff we all know and love. And also that awesome 2005 logo and a 5 plus in the corner. So out of the packaging you can see obviously mine is worn out because this is a dummy review. And overall at first glance it looks really cool. There are a couple of things which uh, I would like to point out. There's a couple of flaws later but I'll get onto those in a sec. First let's look at the articulation. The head can move left to right but as you can see if you turn it too much it will get uh, damage on the neck so best not do a 360. The shoulders can do a 360, not a ball joint unfortunately, and the elbows can do 90 and I wouldn't advise moving the wrists, I'm sure they probably could move but uh, they've snapped off in the past so I wouldn't advise it. The waist doesn't actually move, that's a surprise, I thought it did. The legs kick out to 45 degrees, the knees do a 90, and that's it, it's all very basic. So taking a look at the face sculpt, yeah you can definitely see David Tennant in there. Not the best likeness ever, it's based off of the early series 2 appearance with his floppy hair. The hair is painted very basically, there's no dry brushing or anything to bring out any details. Then we have the gorgeous looking trench coat with all the creases and wrinkles and all the buttons. It looks very nice. It would be quite nice if they painted the buttons with a gloss or maybe just a darker brown. The trench coat probably should be a little bit lighter as well, but uh, it's not its not too bad. So moving over to the back, we've got more of that uh, creased and wrinkled effect, although it is a bit glossy, a bit too glossy for my liking. With the hands, you can see all the details of the fingers and the thumbs. Oh my god, this thing does not stand up well. Underneath the trench coat, you can see uh, the pinstripe suit, which is detailed very nicely, along with the crease and wrinkle material effect with the buttons undone at the bottom. A common complaint people have is the fact that the uh, the blazer isn't open enough and you can't really see an awful lot of the shirt and tie. I do understand this, uh, but honestly it's not, it's not too much of an issue for me. So moving on to the sand shoes, you can see that they're quite nicely detailed, nicely painted. So overall, does this figure still hold up from 2006? Mm, kind of. I mean, the detail is lacking in some areas. I do think that the, the coat definitely should have been a, a, a light colour and the buttons should have been painted separately to uh, pop it off, but they did this in the 13 Doctors box set, which was really cool. See, I hope you enjoyed that little dummy run, guys. As you can tell, it cut off at the end, but um, I can't really be bothered emptying my SD card just for this little dummy review. Um, but like I said, I'll, I'll end up redoing this at some point with a proper David Tennant figure, one that's not all damaged and stuff, so you, can, you guys can see that on the main channel. Yeah, I've decided to put this on the secondary channel as the first video, just to just to see how it does. But yeah, this uh, obviously there were things wrong with it. I think the lighting wasn't perfect. 
Uh, it's quite difficult to get the camera to focus on an action figure, so that's something I'm going to have to work on. I've always had a problem with that, but uh, I'll figure it out eventually, guys.